Journey with me, if you would, to one of Paul's epistles, Galatians. Galatians, fifth chapter. And we'll begin our reading at the 16th verse. Galatians 5, 16. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you need one more time, hurry up. <laughs> Galatians 5, 16. I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Right. And these are contrary <laughs> to one another. Right, right. So that you do not do the things that you wish. Right. But if you are led by the spirit, mm -hmm. you are not under the law. Right. No. Not the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, oh, sorcery, right. hatred, All right. contention, oh. jealousies, Outburst of wrath, <laughs> selfish ambition, yeah. uh -huh. dissension, heresies, mm -hmm. envy, murder, drunkenness, yeah, reveries, right. and the like, mm -hmm. of which I tell you be beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, and those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm -hmm. joy, mm -hmm. peace. Long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh, which is with its passions and desires. Our, our verse of contention if we live in the Spirit, <laughs> let us also walk in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Amen. Repeat after me, verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. I want us to, to talk today. I want to talk today from the subject walking with God. Walking with God. Now, as we begin, I have a big ask, a big important ask. I ask that you treat this morning's message as only being personal to you. I ask that from this moment on, don't attempt to apply the message to anyone else, whether you think they need it or not. All right. Today has to be only about you and you alone. Amen. Can you do that? Amen. But I mean seriously, can you can you really do that? Yeah. I'm convinced that many in the church have easily mastered the ability to apply the biblical standards and its expectations to others and someone else, mm -hmm. while not rigidly to themselves. Mm -hmm. right. mm. The Lord knows who I am. The Lord knows all about me. The Lord knows who I am. He knows what I'm about. And so that's all right. Church folks have demonstrated an expertise in pointing out or talking about what's wrong and the faults and failures of their brothers and sisters. They've mastered that. I have no doubt. And looking from another angle, we tend to know what's all, we always tend to know what's best for somebody else. I have no doubt that many in the church could and would tell me how to live for God. That in and of itself is not a not so problematic or a major issue. But however, there does seem to be a dysfunction, a disconnect in us as a whole body. And I'm talking about the church and moving forward together in this walk with God. 
Right. See, walking with God first requires personal re a personal relationship in this walk with God. It, re right. it requires a, right. a personal relationship of agreement right. from each of us. Mm -hmm. Amos 3 and 3 says, can, a, can two walk together unless they be agreed? Right. See, it's, it's not about all of us. It's about a personal relationship. It's about a personal agreement with God. It's when we talk about walking with God, that's a personal walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, but the challenge is we, we worry about everyone else. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. In Ephesians, it talks in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, it talks about Christ being the one who rightly fits us together. Mm -hmm. It's he's the one who can fit it all together to make it work. See, Christ knows how to take the best of us and mold us together for the effective work of the church for the offering of salvation to the world. All right. And he knows how to, to make it work so that it means edification for himself, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's the ideal. That's what, that's what we should be here for. Yeah. But guess what? But in this world, we struggle with the idea of knowing. Mm -hmm. Amen, lights. Amen. We have a difficulty in our time living up to the perfect standard. Yeah. See, it's my belief that a major challenge with contemporary Christians is not learning the right thing to do, but simply doing the right thing. Right. Today's message is going to highlight the learning of, it's going to highlight the thought of living in the Spirit walking in the spirit mm -hmm. and the benefits right. mm -hmm. living in the spirit is living a transparent life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you mean by that when you say you for god guess what all eyes are now on you mm -hmm. they watch everything you do mm -hmm. i often said and i'll say it today they you can go out there and cut your grass but you better do it in a holy way because somebody watching you <laughs> A transparent life. It's a life of obedience to the Lord God. The exact life exemplified by Jesus Christ. The same life exemplified by him. Presented to us through the word and through the Holy Spirit. See, God's expectations of persons in the spirit is their willingness to obey him completely. But guess what? If that's his expectations, then that raises a question. Those of us who are already saved, can God trust us? Mm -hmm. Can he trust us with that expectation? Mm -hmm. Can he trust us with that responsibility? Mm -hmm. Can he trust us to give up completely to him? Mm -hmm. See, to live in the spirit, you must be born in the spirit. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Contrary to what the world says, there's only one way that you can be in the spirit. You got to be born. Mm -hmm. And you and, and and when you say born, you can only be born in the spirit through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 10 and 9 expresses it this way: that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, from that, the Lord starts an instantaneous process which entails regeneration. <laughs> That means you become a new. You're a new person. In that process is indwelling. That means the Holy Spirit comes inside of you. That means you have the full power of God in you. Then there's the baptism of the Spirit, which means you are out of fellowship. And now that you now that you've been baptized with the Spirit, you're now in God's family. And in that process is is is, is God sealed. That means He seals you. So when the devil comes by, he knows that you belong yes. to God. Yes. All right. Right, right. Yes. yes, sir. That's the process that God does. Yes. If I'm going to live in the spirit, I must say no to self. Right. I believe there are plenty of would-be followers, some who are only willing to follow Christ halfway. Come on. Right. Leaving the other half under the control of the flesh. 
There are some in the church house who've gotten comfortable with living among the spirit. They come to 10 15 worship, occasionally come to Sunday school or Bible study. They may even be moved by the songs that were sung. They may even say amen to the preached word. May even throw a dollar in the offering truck. Right. However, they leave all of that in the church. When they step back into the world, guided by their own desires of flesh. All right. All right. That this behavior, my brother and sister, is being among the spirit, right. not living in the spirit. Mm -hmm. There are some aspects of the church experience they like, but commitment and devotion is constraining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As stated before, a normal Christian life dictates that one is willing to follow the Holy Spirit, having complete obedience without reservation. It means to commit thyself literally and entirely to the Lord. I know that hurts some people, but it means literally, completely to the Lord. Now, obedience is the Holy, but see, obedience in the Holy Spirit means freedom. Freedom. We gain freedom in your you gain freedom in your spiritual life because you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, allowing to the Holy Spirit to break those bonds oh, of our selfish desires. Mm -hmm. He breaks them. Paul in the first verse of this fifth chapter says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Paul also writes in verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Right. Mm -hmm. If you read this Galatians, you read this epistle in this Galatians chapter, you will understand where Paul was coming from. Yeah. See, Paul was addressing the false doctrine that was dangerously being pursued and, and spread by the Jewish teachers called the Judaizers. Yeah, yeah. See, the Judaizers was one that said, yes, you need to believe in Jesus, but you also need to follow the Mosaic law. Yep. Right. You need to believe in Jesus, but you also have to follow the law. Right. Right. That was a false doctrine. Yeah. Because Jesus said nobody can serve two masters. Right. You will love, you'll hate one and you love the other, right. or you'll be loyal to one and you'll despise the other. Right. You can't serve two masters. Right. And so when we understand that we have this, we have this thing. It also says in, in the requirement of the law is fulfilled and the believers who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Amen. Romans 8 and 4. Paul was telling you, Jesus already paid the price of the law with his death on the cross. The, 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 the price was already paid by Jesus. So now let us follow Jesus and his will and let us walk in the spirit. Yeah. See, the, the idea of walking literally means the habitual way we conduct ourselves in the Lord. Verse 16 in our text is a reminder to us. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This command to walk is given to all of us. Right. Not given to the preacher, all right. the deacons, all right. the choir members. It's given to all of us. Right. And the first step, if we're going to walk in the Spirit, is to pray. Yeah. We need to pray. Yeah. And see, asking the Holy Spirit to be our guide and our friend. Yeah. See, a lot of us don't realize that we, 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 we scurry around we do all manner of things mm -hmm. until we get tired and wore out, fall out, and then we call on the Lord. But we need to pray. Our first step should be prayer. And we should ask the Holy Spirit to be our friend, to be our guide. And guess what? If you are saved, you already got it. Mm -hmm. And so all you need to do is ask him to take over. But guess what? Then you have to surrender. Amen. So you have to make up in your mind that you want the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. 
You have to surrender. You got to trust and obey. Mm -hmm. And when we trust and obey, the Lord will come in and he will lead us. Mm -hmm. See, I, I suspect a lot of times, in, let me say this, in Deuteronomy 4 and 20, 29, God is speaking to his people. But he says, but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. And he further goes on in verse 36, which is important. So he said, and he made thee to hear his voice that he might instruct thee. He made thee to hear his voice so that he might instruct thee. Mm -hmm. See, to walk in the spirit, you need to focus on knowing and hearing the spirit. Mm -hmm. when you, when you, talk, you need to focus on knowing God's voice. You need to focus on knowing and hearing the spirit. See, there's a lot of voices in your head. But they're not of God. You need to focus on knowing because the Bible says my sheep hear my voice. We need to focus on knowing that. And stop focusing on all your trials and tribulations. Paul didn't sit around wallowing in his fear and depression in all the situations that he found himself in. He didn't sit in his pity party. Mm -hmm. Paul was all about, he, Paul focused on worshiping God, mm -hmm. praising God. Mm -hmm. Paul focused on those churches that he had planted on his missionary journey. Mm -hmm. Paul was about the Lord's business. Mm -hmm. Even when he was sitting in that jail, mm -hmm. writing to the Galatians. Mm -hmm. Paul was focused not on his troubles, but he was focused on the glory of God. And that's a lesson we ought to be taking. Amen. Focusing on not our troubles, but focusing on God. Oh. See, I suspect a lot of times when many of us go into prayer, we focus on past failures. Well, amen. You know how we do. We replay those failures over and over and over again in our minds to where we start pondering how far up the road we could have been if we hadn't have failed at that. Right. Or if we hadn't have messed up this. Right. Yes. Brother and sister, you got to forget the past. Mm -hmm. Because if you were born in the spirit, it's all under the blood anyway. Yeah. You got to forget the past. Mm -hmm. You got to forget yesterday. Yeah. You got to even forget the things you messed up this morning. All right. All right. <laughs> You can't even look past, you can't even look too far in the future because you don't know what's going on. Only the Lord knows what's going to happen in the future. You got to put your trust in God. Not in your ability to see because we miss things. You got to trust God. But we got to stop focusing on the past. Instead, we need to focus on God. The benefit of obedience is, is thankfulness mm -hmm. and joy. Amen. I am, um, I'm often reminded of this when I was looking at this, I was, I'm often reminded of when Brother Bell prays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brother Bell can pray Amen. and he gets and he gets so excited because he just wanna try to tell it all. And, and, and he, he can't, he, and sometimes he just, you know, because I know how he feels. Sometimes you just can't come up with a word that even, it just doesn't mess it up for how you feel. It's that joy that you feel of having the God, the awesome God that we have. And you can't even describe it to anybody else. You, you're just trying to figure out something to say. But then I always get tickled because it's, he knows it. Brother Bell said, it's all good. <laughs> but we, they, was, they were singing this song today. And I thought about this particular passage. He said, 
I think about his love. Mm -hmm. All right. I think about his goodness. I think about his goodness. Yeah. Yeah. We serve an awesome God. Yeah. We ought to be excited yeah. to tell somebody else how awesome God is. Yeah. We serve a wonderful God yeah. that has never forsaken us yet. Amen. Yeah. I'm thankful for that because he says if you trust and you obey him, his spirit will manifest the fruits that give our life meaningful, yeah. meaningfulness. Yeah. He talks about love. Now, I don't know about you, but I need a little love. Amen. I'm always ready to accept a little more love. I don't, I don't know about you, but I, 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 I pray for me to be some love. Because I love you all. I love this church. You don't know I love this church. We not perfect. But God is still in the midst. And I don't know about you, but who, who can use a little more peace? Uh -huh. I, I know somebody had the hellhounds on their trail last week. Amen. <laughs> who can use a little more peace? I think about long suffering. I think about kindness. But well, 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 why would I want a long suffering? See, I'm grateful that God gives me patience to deal with the long suffering so that I don't lose my mind. All right. I'm grateful for what He's doing for my life. Uh -huh. He's giving me the patience to deal with this world. Uh -huh. Amen. Trump is in that office for a reason. Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> we didn't got too fat, sassy, and happy. No. Yeah. 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 Tell the preacher. Tend on us, self-control. Yeah. He says in the 24th verse, and those who are Christ, that means you and his family, have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Mm -hmm. See, you can't manifest the benefits of God through the flesh. Mm -hmm. Only through his will yeah. can you have peace with God. Only through his will can you obtain the patience to go through all these long suffering. Only through his will can you know that you can you can make it. Yeah. I get down, but I know when I'm down that I still got a God. I can reach up my hand and he'll reach his hand back. Yeah. I know when I'm, when I'm troubled, he's going to be there to solve my problem. Yeah. I know that when I cry out to him, he's going to hear my, my plea and he's going to come and run it. I know God is who he is because he promised to be with me even to the end of the world. I'm thankful for the God that we have. I'm thankful for the joy and the fruit that he has put in my life because of my obedience. When I'm obedient, he provides, his spirit provides the fruit so that I can make it, so that you can make it, so that you can get through, so that you can climb that mountain. God is there. And if we have trust in him and we obey, All right. his fruit mm -hmm. will manifest in our life mm -hmm. and bring us closer yeah. Yeah. to a walk with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. We must die to self mm -hmm. and live through God. Mm -hmm. For the price of the law has already been paid. Mm -hmm. when, my, when our brother Jesus Mm. Climbed up on Gotham's hill. Yeah. Yeah. Bearing that cross. Yeah. With our burdens. Yeah. With our iniquities. Right. Bearing that cross. Yeah. With our transgressions. Yeah. Yeah. All the way up on Gotham's hill. And they beat him. Yeah. And they spat on him. Yeah. And they nailed him to a wooden cross. Yeah. But then they did something. They, they didn't know what they were doing. They lifted him up uh -huh. 
And when they lifted him up, the Bible says that he said, I'll draw all men unto me. Then they put him in a bottle too. And for three days, he was there. But then early, early, Sunday morning, Mary, Mary and her crew came to visit the bottle. Visit that too. And when they got there, the stone would have been rolled away. And they looked inside and there was these angels. Yeah. And the angels say, why are you seeking the living? Yeah. I'm going to be born. Jesus. Yeah. I got up with all power in his hand. With all power. Yeah. And I know we have our troubles. His power is stronger than your, than your, your addiction. His power is stronger than all of your troubles. His power is stronger than all of your mishaps. His power is stronger than your sickness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. I was on my way home. <laughs> you saw this to go home on uh, Father's Day. And the stewardess was going through her normal paces. And she says, as if, and she says, that they say it in a nice way, if we happen to lose cabin pressure, <laughs> 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 that means you don't have nowhere to breathe. That's what it means. And if you don't have nowhere to breathe, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you happen to lose cabin pressure, your oxygen mask will drop. Yeah. She says, make sure you securely fasten your mask first. <laughs> then you can assist mm -hmm. others around you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this world is trying to take your life on. Go ahead, all right. It's trying to That's take good. away all the joy yeah. and peace that you've got in this world. Man. But you got to secure your walk with Jesus first. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 But you gotta secure your walk with Christ first. Yeah. 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 Then you can help somebody else. Yeah. 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 You don't secure your mask. Yeah. 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 You don't secure your walk. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you can't help nobody else. Yeah. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Walking with God. God bless you. Amen.